Welcome back to a new video. In this video we will discuss the Chepichet response for a low-pass filter design. We will see how we can work out the component values for our selling key filter circuit. Of course we will see everything step by step in our calculations and also verify these in SPI simulations. So our design objective is shown here. We like to design a Chepichet response. It should be an active low-pass filter. We need to use a selling key filter and it's also we calculate the actual stop and attenuation. Now, what does all this mean? We will clarify it in a minute. The specification for our design is go shown here. Maximum pass method ripple is 2 dB. The minimum attenuation at that stop band region must be 35 dB. The cutoff frequency is 500 Hz and the stop band frequency is 1.5 kHz. So the meaning actually of these specifications are follows. At this frequency of 1.5 kHz, we need to have an attenuation which is minimum 35 dB. Okay, let's see how we can work out the calculation for this design. First, the step one, it is our filter order for our chip chair response. Now, those are the epsilon P and epsilon S we need to calculate. You see here the A max and A minimum, which are related to that uh, A max and A minimum given the specifications. If you calculate them, you get these two values from these two dB Unit. So taking this together, put that in the low pass uh, championship response filter uh, formula. You get here the R cosine H, and then you get here the epsilon S, epsilon P, the stop pad frequency, and the cutoff frequency substitute in the formula. And you get here 2.831 approximately. Now, this is of course what we get exactly or an approximate form but we need to have an integer value in order to realize our uh, circuit. So we need to go for an NS3. So we need a third order filter circuit. That means for our circuit realization, we need to use a three pole selling key low pass filter circuit, which is actually shown here. So we have here three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, and also three capacitors, one operation amplifier shown here in unity gain feedback configuration. So, how do we work it out? Now, step two is the component values. We can set the R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R3. So all the resistors are the exact same. So in this case, select it as one kilo ohm and we just define it as R. And then we can go to the scaling factor, which is defined here as capital letter C is one over that R and omega C. And omega C is two pi times this cutoff frequency FC. Now, when you substitute here the values, we know that 1000 for our 1000 ohm or 1 kilo ohm, 2 pi times 500 hertz, and that will result in 3.1831 approximately times 10 to the power minus 7. And this is an important value we need to use to go to the capacitor values here in this circuit. Now, here is the table for Chebyshev response 2 dB ripple. You see here the order in the left column and the number of sections you need for each order and also what kind of a section you need. And you see also here in the uh, the ratios C1 over C and also R over R1 depending on what kind of filter you need. If you need a high pass filter, you go for this uh, ratio, so the resistor ratios. If you need a low pass filter, that's actually what we need, then you go for this ratios. So in order case, we need to have a third order, that means this row. And looking at this ratios, we need to have a C1 over C, which is our scaling factor, that C is the same C, which should be 27.82. The next one will be then 3.113 and the final one will be then 0 0.03892. That means actually the following. Looking at these tables, we get actually now three pole. That means this is the C1, this is C2, and this is C3. So you actually get this one and you write it down such that you express the capacitors as shown here. And now you need to use your scaling factor C in here and you calculate your capacitor values for our design here. You see here 8.855 microfarads, etc. So what is R? Now the design is by the way completed. So we are we have all the components calculated. So we can we can we can now go to the actual stop attenuation is the next step. For that we need to first calculate the pass band frequency. That's done for the low pass filter shape shape response using this formula. You see the cutoff frequency you see the filter order again and the epsilon p we have determined in step one. So substitute here the values 500, the 1 over 3 of course because that's the integer and then you also have the epsilon p which is shown here 0 0.7648 and that will result in 484 hertz approximately. That's the 
uh, pass point frequency. And this is also the frequency where the gain is minus A max or minus 2 dB. This is the meaning actually of this ripple. We will dive into that ripple uh, in more detail when we discuss the simulation results in SPICE. Okay, now we can calculate the A minimum actual stop and attenuation. How much is that? Now, this is the formula for you calculating that for the low pass filter. Shape is your response. You see here again the epsilon P, the filter order, the stop and frequency, and the pass point frequency. We have everything, so we can just substitute that in here. You get here 3, 1.5 kilohertz, so uh, 1,500, 484 from the pass point frequency here, and also the epsilon P here. This will result in 38.5 dB. Now, we required from our design 35 dB, so we have achieved our goal because this is larger than the 35 dB. Okay, let's now go to the simulation results. This is now the simulation in the body plot. You see here the championship response gain. This is the frequency, this is the gain. This is the circuit and the Tina Ti spice. You see the components we just calculated, also the resistors, the input, and also the unity gain feedback operational amplifier here. Now let's go one by one. The cutoff frequency is indeed 500 Hz, because at that frequency we see here the gain is minus 3.01 dB, which is the definition of the cutoff frequency looking at the 0 dB for DC. Now for the gain uh, at this 1.5 kHz, it is indeed minus 38.5 dB, which is also what we have calculated as a minimum. In addition, you see that here the passment frequency, which is the 484 Hz, that is the gain where you have uh, minus 2 dB. So this ripple which you actually see is a ripple, if you, we will zoom in that shortly, but this is the ripple and then going up to the peak and then coming come back here. This point is where the ripple region stops and that happens at 484 Hz and that's also what we have calculated. Now let's go here in more detail in the next slide, but this is of course we have now uh, achieved our goal, we have verified our calculations. Let's now go to the simulation result and zoom in, in that ripple region. That is very important because now we see the complete ripple region. You see here now 0 to up to minus 4 dB, so it's completely zoomed in and then here from 0 to 600 Hz. This is now, by the way, in linear scale just to uh, make this uh, plot easier to follow. Again, you see the pass with frequency, the cutoff frequency, but we see more. We see the peak and the valley. So there's a valley, so there is a minimum, which is at minus 2 dB at 242 Hz, and there is a peak, which is then 0 dB at 419 Hz. There is also, by the way, this DC value, so at this 0, uh, this 0 dB at uh, 0 Hz with DC, that's actually where the championship response starts. By the way, for odd order, so N is 3, 5, 7, so for that kind of order championship response, you always start at 0 dB. And if you have an even order, so N is 2, second order, fourth order, sixth order, etc., then your uh, championship response will start at the ripple where you actually have defined here. So for example, then you will start, if this was for example a fourth order design, then we should start actually at minus two and then go up, etc. That is how it uh, is defined, the championship response. Okay, how do we calculate, by the way, the values and the peak frequencies here? Now that can be done by using the passive frequency. We have used this formula and we have defined it was 484 hertz. So again here for completeness. And those are the formulas for calculating the peak frequencies and the valley frequencies. So you see here the formula for the two cases and also how this K is need to be used. Uh, let's see how we do that because we have here two, one peak, one valley. And let's calculate that. So for K is 1, you substitute here in this formula. K is 1, that means then 2 times 1 minus 1 will be of course 1 times pi and over 2 times n. Now that means 2 times 3 will be 6 here. That's shown here, and this is now the 484 hertz from the peak frequency, uh, I mean the pass path frequency. Now this will result in 419 hertz, which is exactly as we have it in the simulator, so this is actually really, uh, very nice to see. Now we have also the valley frequency, now you see now that we substitute K is 2. If you by the way do here K is 2, you can say why don't you do it here, but you do it here. Now if you do it here, you get here 3 pi over 6, that will cosine of a half P, that will just be zero, so there's no uh, in important information there. So this will be then, uh, for K is two, that will be then two pi over six, will be then pi over three. That will result, if you do the calculation here, 242 hertz, which is also here. So we have now determined by formula where the valley and the peak frequencies are.
Now, if you continue, for example, K3, etc., you will get more, but there will be also some values which are not interesting anymore. So, it will be negative or other values. So, those are the two frequencies, peak frequency and the value frequency, which will then verify what we find in our stimulations. All right, this was our example, constellating the Chapeau response active low pass filter. We have calculated our component values using the selling key filter configuration. And we also verified our findings using the SPI simulations. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Again, in order to grow our community, support us and share and like these videos so that we can reach more people. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.